My name on my birth certificate, my driver's license, is Walter Randall Bush Jr. Um, I go by Randy Bush. I think it's funny though that my name is Walter Randall Bush Jr. because my dad's dad was Walter Randall Bush and they named my dad Walter Randall Bush Sr. that's on his birth certificate. So then they named me Walter Randall Bush Jr. and I'm technically the third, but I'm, no one talks about that in my family. I was born in Birmingham, Alabama, and I was raised in Hueytown, Alabama, which is like 20 minutes outside of Birmingham. Where are you currently live? Providence, Rhode Island. This is where, this is Providence, Rhode Island. Welcome. It's only a matter of time before all social media has their own killer. So I'm waiting for the Christian Mingle killer. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was in prison for eight years. Um, she went to prison when I was 10. Uh, that was very crazy. And I don't know, I was a competition cheerleader when I was in middle school. I was a martial artist, a trained martial artist, and, um, you know, I think my dad was really smart to get me involved in, in martial arts when I was a very young age, because he could tell how queer I was at a very young age, because I've, I've never not been queer, um, and I think it was smart for him to do that, because when I was in high school, it basically turned me into a little bit of a monster, like, if people said things to me. I wasn't afraid to talk back to them because I knew that if it ever got to a physical point, I could definitely defend myself. So it made me like the gay Regina George of my high school in some way. If you could fly, would you want wings or would you just want to be able to fly like Peter Pan? Wings, wings okay? <laughs> Peter Pan, wings. Wait, can we get a show of hands? Wings. Peter Pan. Sick. I would want to do Peter Pan style too. I also feel like if I did Peter Pan style, I'd be super fucking fat because I would just fly like this probably. Like. When you live in Birmingham, um, there's a decent scene there for like art, punk rock stuff, and comedy, but. Um, Inevitably, you end up going to Atlanta or Nashville or New Orleans to see bands that you want to see touring or, or shows of any kind of thing. So I got so used to going to New Orleans a lot. And um, when I was in New Orleans, I met my ex-boyfriend who is originally from here, from uh, Foster Gloucester. And um, he was going to move back up here for a summer before he went to Spain. And I, my band had just broken up and there was no real reason for me to like, I, I wasn't going to school, and I didn't feel particularly motivated in, in Birmingham to do anything. Plus my, I mean, I love my family, but they're crazy. I mean, my mom is out of prison now and is wacky. So it was just, it was just like time to, to get out. So we're doing this now. Um, Paula Dean, when she did it, she didn't have tomatoes and lettuce on there. We're not doing it doing straight up bacon, cheese, meat. It's like that. I feel like I should smush it down though. Right? Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is so, so exciting. Oh my god. Okay. It's so good. It's so good. Oh my god. Well, luckily, when I moved to Providence, uh, my ex boyfriend's friends were really accepting of me, and um, so I. I kind of inherited a whole group of friends when I moved up here. Um, so that wasn't a hard adjustment socially, but it was very hard trying to figure out like where I was gonna work and what I was gonna be doing now as like a creative outlet because I there was already like a, 
a scene that I was involved in in the city that I just left, so I didn't know anything about how or what I would get involved in here. Um, and I'd always been interested in comedy, so I was hanging around at um, Perishable Theater a lot at some point, and that's what, what Perishable Theater was, what 95 Empire Street is now. It's just the black box theater for AS220, but I was hanging out there a lot and going to see Improv Jones shows, and they eventually had a, um, like a call to just audience members to come and like perform with them one time, and I was like, I'll give this a try. And it was awful, and I did a terrible job, but it really inspired me to, like, I was like, I guess I'll take an improv class now, and because of Perishable Theater, I really found, like, my own scene again in performing. And it was really gratifying because it wasn't, like, some. it was something I did on my own independently of my ex-boyfriend. So I think it was really, like, an establishing, like, I'm involved, I'm in Providence now. There was a, um, it's still around, there's an improv group called Bring Your Own Improv, and uh, I would go to their shows and get up and perform with them, and it was really gratifying to have, like, cast members say, like, you're really good, Why? What? what's your deal? Are you in a troupe? Are you, what? You know, it's like, no, I'm just figuring this stuff out. So I think when seeing seeing the response from them and also the crowd and then being asked to audition for them as a cast member, I think that's when I was like, okay, I guess I'm, I guess I am funny. Because my ex-boyfriend told me one time and something that has always stuck with me is he, he didn't ever seem too supportive of my um, interest in trying to perform. And he would say to me, it's different to be funny amongst your friends and then to be funny on stage. And then to be on a stage and have people think I was funny, it was incredibly validating for me. And I was like, well, you don't know what you're fucking talking about. <laughs> so.